Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel today. Thank you for returning. Today as you can see we're at Iron Bodies which is located in Dunstable and or Houghton Regis as some of you may know. This gym is owned by my friend Gav and I'll be taking you through my leg workout today. So starting out with uh, first of all is a little bit of uh, just sort of getting the heart rate up, getting my joints lubricated, getting the blood circulating around the body. I'm using the Stairmaster here as uh, we're going to be using the legs. I, normally I would use the bike, but the Stairmaster, just as good in my eyes. After sort of five or ten minutes of just gradually warming up the body, I will then perform some mobility stretching um, or some static stretching. Mobility always first before static. Here I'm using the bands. Uh, I got this band from Decathlon and it was only about £10, so really, really worth your while, guys, to pick up a few of these bands. Not necessarily for your main workout, but you know you can utilise them and use them as part of your warm-up too. So here I'm just literally warming up my inner thighs. This helps with uh, loosening off my hips before I do any sort of aggressive squatting movements. I've played football for years, probably since I was about five or six years old. And um, this I found really, really helps out with the tightness of my hip flexors and the uh, tightness of my adductors. This was a real problem for me when I first started squatting. I used to sort of feel quite aggravated and I couldn't get the right range of motion and, and depth on my squat. So after this, I will again, do some other things just to loosen up my glutes. Um, again, adductors, abductors, they're all huge staple parts of, you know, getting ready for, for heavy lifting duty, particularly on the, on the legs. In a previous video, as you can see here, I showed that uh, my lifting shoes, one of the best things that I ever, ever bought. They just help with every single flat based lift or movement that, that you can do in the gym. So, here I'm using them for the, most of my workout and uh, as you can see from the picture here, the first exercise I'm going to do is a pendulum squat. Now it's called the pendulum squat for a reason, it is because it actually moves in a pendulum mechanism. Okay, so it doesn't just move up and down. Okay, what I'm actually doing with my body here is I am putting pressure into that back plate. So using my hands against the anti-lock system, which secures and re-racks the weights, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing and I'm putting pressure into that bar where my hands are. You'll see a bit more uh, clearly in the next clip. Um, so as I'm doing that, okay, I am forcing my lower back and I'm forcing the back of my shoulders into the chair. You don't want to come away from the chair at all. Uh, some people will say that as you go uh, quite low on this, you know, your, your coccyx will then fold underneath itself. You, you don't want that, okay? You want to come down to at least 90 degrees. I go just that little bit lower. There's no excuses with this. If you're struggling to get down to 90 degrees or lower, then it just means that you need to start working on your mobility a bit more. You need to start doing more of those mobility stretches, prepping your body, uh, pre-exercise because you'll you'll be tight okay so here I'm belting up from a previous video again you can see that I, I get to a certain weight before I use my belt okay um, when I'm warming up when I'm doing my preload sets I don't use my belt at all I try and hold back off of that knee wraps as well I try and hold back off of the knee wraps in fact in actual fact in today's session I didn't even use my knee wraps once this was quite a uh, a light session I went no lower than eight reps today on anything and you'll see as I get through the session um, as I start doing my front squats I'm not I'm using hardly any weight whatsoever I think 60 kilos but it was enough at the end of the session because my quads were already uh, already pretty taxed so here I think I'm working with 15 30 40 kilos on the back of that plus whatever the machine weighs so it you know it's not a great deal of weight however because your back is against the backrest there you're isolating that part of your body so your lower back and sort of your your glute min your glute max is not working as much as what it would do if you were on a normal squat for example which in turn makes the pendulum squat even harder because you're using less muscles 
to generate a force enabling you to stand up. Okay, foot placement probably a little bit narrower than a normal squat, toes slightly facing out, and you can experiment with your feet yourselves, you know, sometimes you can do them really close together or really far apart, it's totally up to you guys. I think I'm about to move on to the next exercise, which will be an outer thigh machine. Yep, here it is, the outer thigh machine. And again, this just helps with my hip, with my hip mobility. Going superset straight into quad extension. So we've just taxed the quads on the pendulum squat. Now we're loosening up the outer thighs and around the sides of the glutes and hips, and then moving on to quads. So here, the weight is you know, really, really light. I, I don't need to use real heavy weights on this. If anything, it'll just stiffen me up. So I keep it flowing, I keep the weights moving, I keep my body moving, I'm not resting at all. I'm going for like 12 to 15 reps, straight across to quad extension. Probably one of my favorite leg machines. Again, you can see, I think I'm on about 42 kilos, not heavy at all. Have a quick look at what I'm actually doing um, for my technique on this. So you'll see, again, better in a, in a different clip here, but what I'm actually doing is I'm raising the bar up three quarters of the way. I am then stopping, coming down ever so slightly, and then hyperextending upwards. All the while, my toes are in an upward pointed position to engage the quad even more. So I'm not just doing, you know, normal reps here, okay? I'm doing a three-quarter rep and then a quarter hyperextension afterwards. So up, pause, extend. Up, pause, extend. I'm doing this for 12 reps. I hope my counting is correct with what the video is saying, but in my head, uh, back there this morning, I was doing 12 reps. Um, so, yeah, a real, a real burner, this, okay? Okay. Um, any benefits uh, for doing this than doing it normally? Not really. The small hyperextension will allow you to recruit more muscle fibers in the quad. Um, and because you're doing it, you know, really, really controlled and nice and neatly, as I sometimes tell my clients, keep it neat, keep it neat. Um, you're going to get better contraction on that muscle. So here, not actually wearing a GoPro chest plate. It's something that I really want to... Uh, incorporate for for something maybe in the future um so here i'm just literally holding my camera and uh <clears throat> yeah we get i'm showing you from sort of my point of view so doing the reps here on the outer thigh coming across I normally just leave all my gear lying around in the gym <laughs> i have bundles and bundles of stuff in my bag of tricks as i uh as i say to all my pt clients i bought my bag of tricks today and they always look at me like they want to throttle me. But uh, yeah, so as you can see, you can see the reps a bit better now. So I'm coming up, stopping, coming down, and then going up again to finish off the rep. Now I'm trying to point my toes as much as I possibly can around that bar. And that will help with the contraction of the quadricep muscles. Again, look at the weight. <clears throat> I'm not using a lot. It's not a lot of weight. But it's enough with the rep range and with the pre-taxing on the pendulum squat for me to get a real a real good pump on my quad. One of those days, man, I get halfway through my workout and I think, yeah, I need some BCAAs. So take them. It don't matter. You don't have to take them before. You don't have to take them after. Take them during. Take them halfway through. Ghost Amino. One of the best tasting BCAA amino acids I have ever had in my life okay moving on this little contraption little little nasty machine here the sissy squat really really simple straightforward piece of kit however you want to make sure that you're doing this right okay look at my technique here this is the wrong way to do it the wrong way to do it just squatting on it normally you, you don't do this, okay? You're not going to contract the quad muscle and recruit as much muscle fibers than if you do this. Lean back, okay? You're, the machine ain't going to tip up. You'll be very, very surprised at how heavy that machine actually is, okay, guys? Lean back. Get those quads ripping. Again, here, this is what not to do. So don't just, even though that squat there is fine, the form on that squat's absolutely fine. Don't do it on this machine. Your calves and ankles are locked in for a reason here, okay? Lean back, 
get the full stretch on that quad. If you're doing it right, you will feel this unbelievably. And even more, if you hold a weight plate. So that weight plate there was only 15 kilos. <laughs> you know, you don't need a lot. If, if you're doing anything right in the gym, you do not need a lot of weight to recruit muscle fibers, okay? Obviously, the, the higher the weight, the more hypertrophy you're gonna sort of contemplate. However, just holding a small plate like this, if you're a beginner, no problem get the technique correct first. And that is something that I strive upon. Whenever I train myself, whenever I train other people, there's no point doing it if your technique isn't good. That's the way people get injured. And I get that you can do cheat reps in bodybuilding, I get that, but I don't like to. Moving on, front squat. Little tip for you, if you struggle on front squat, grab a towel, put it around the back of your neck, get under the bar, Crisscross your arms, grab the towel, pull your neck towards the bar. Keep your elbows nice and high. This will keep everything solidified, all right? If you don't like doing front squats, or if you're new to front squats, try that. That is literally my little life-saving tip if you're not used to doing front squats. Anyway, have a look at my technique. You'll see that I'm going at least 90, just below. I am belted up for this. It's only 60 kilos, and I'm only going for 80, uh, sorry, 80. I'm only going for eight reps, okay? I am not the strongest bloke in the gym. I've mentioned it before. My genetics, okay, <clears throat> are not great for strength. My, my muscle fibers are not thick. I'm not dense, okay? So as soon as people realize that realize their, their flaws in the gym, and, and you know not being strong isn't exactly a huge flaw, but it's a little flaw of mine. As soon as you realize them, you're, you drop the ego and you actually get better workouts. I train better now because I train for myself. I don't look at anybody else. I don't look to see what they're lifting. I encourage and I spot if people need to, but my head's in the zone. I'm doing what I can do and I don't concentrate on what other people do. I suggest if you want a better workout, you do the same. So I did four sets of eight, really working on my technique, nice and slow down, nice and slow up. I'm starting to get a, a real nasty quad pump on now after doing the quad extension, well, pendulum quad extension, then sissy squat, now front squat. And as you know, the front squat will develop the quads. Uh, also, obviously, it will develop the glutes, the hamstrings, all the supporting muscles around the core, all the supporting muscles around the knees. But I really, really, really do feel this on the quads. Um, because that weight is on the front of your body, you lean forward ever so slightly uh, more, puts more tension on the quad. You can see from the grimace there that, you know, this is getting tough now. It's 60 kilos, it's, it's, it's tough. <laughs> Final exercise. Really, really weird machine, but, but lovely to use. It's a kneeling uh, or lying leg curl. Um, I'd probably say it's more, more aiming towards a kneeling and then you're sort of lying across two pads on your upper body. But it's a lovely machine. I've used some different hamstring machines before, but this, this by far is the, uh, is the cherry on the cake, this. And you're, you're, you're quite comfortable in this position as well. Um, individual hamstrings, okay? So no matter what the left one does, the right one's gonna be doing the same. Um, and that is great for you know building muscles individually if you're on a machine just like the quad extension that i done earlier if you're on that machine um how do you know which quad is stronger how do you know which quad's weaker how do you know which quad is working harder than the other quad you you don't okay you just assume that you're getting the same workout both sides and it's probably very very minute but training stuff in singles like this for example you know the the hamstrings here or training your quads singularly or on a leg press okay training your legs uh, doing a one leg press is is ideal for working uh, individual muscles and then uh, doing walking lunges as well that's another way that you can uh, stimulate growth through predominantly through one muscle and then predominantly through the other so you're having a symmetrical workout and as we know in bodybuilding symmetry is extremely extremely important that is why I like to work individual legs also you 
sort of you get rid of all your weaknesses and you, you balance your muscle and you, ba you balance your body out. This type of workout is sort of if I had football at the weekend, it wasn't too heavy. As I say, it was, it was quite light and my reps were quite high. So I'm basically going to conclude here, guys. I hope you've learned something from this video. I've uh, added a, a short clip at the end here from uh, post-workout as to what I'm drinking and just to say thank you to Gab as well. So thank you for, for staying with me all this time and I'll catch you in the next clip. Right, guys. Thank you for watching the uh, leg day today. As you can see, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sweaty. Um, leg day is one of those days that I look forward to every single week because I know that I'm going to shed a shitload of calories. I'm probably going to produce the most amount of growth um, on my body and, and produce the most amount of testosterone because the legs are, or should be, the uh, larger muscle groups of the body. Okay, so training them once to twice a week. I normally do once because I play football and juggling around, you know, a heavy leg session or even a, a leg session where I'm doing reps. The DOMS is unbearable sometimes I, I, and I can't play football. So I keep them separated. Um, while the football season's not on at the moment, I try and get in there twice a week just to promote that extra day of growth through my legs. On one day I'll do like some squats, pendulum, front squat or normal back squats. On the other leg session I'll focus more on deadlifts and hamstrings. Um, but as you can see, there's my workout. I hope you've got something from today. I'm going to uh, have a little walk now as a bit of a cool down just around the car park with my protein shake. And the protein shake that I've just bought from Gav is uh, QNT, muscle protein shake. It's a milk-based protein shake. It's not, you know, what I would normally um, take. I've got my own. I use BSN Synthes 6, but, you know, I'm a huge believer in supporting local gyms. You know, Gav's got protein shakes there for a reason, so I'll buy one after my session. Um, he does clothing as well, uh, meals, you can pick up some chicken breast here as well. The gym that I've just been in, Iron Bodies Gym, um, is uh, located in Dunstable, Houghton Regis. I'll put all of the details down in the description box so you can have a look. Come check it out, it's a fiver a session. And if you follow Gav on Instagram, and I'll put Gavin's Instagram down below as well. If you follow him on there, he often does like uh, freebie days and sort of like bring a friend for free and stuff like that. So um, on that note, I want to say thank you to Gav for letting me film in the gym today. I know some people don't like being filmed, so I'm always courteous and mindful of who's about and what I'm doing and when I'm doing it. So appreciate that, Gavin. Thank you, mate. And uh, thank you to all, yous, all you guys that have been watching my small commentary here. I hope, as I say, I hope you found some, uh, some, good, uh, some good advice here and some techniques that you can take forward into your own leg session. Remember to like the video, it really, really does help me out a lot. It helps me to push forward to that 400 mark and uh, I will catch you guys in the next vlog. Thank you very much.